final tip. Say you have a view that you really like. Say, maybe I really like this weird side view. And I want to be able to get back to it later. There are a few things that you can do. The first thing is to save as scene. If you save as a scene, well, then you can come back to it later. There are commands that you can use to do all of this, um, but just the simplest way with this little interface, I'm just going to rename this to weird, weird view. Okay. If you're not seeing that scene representation, there's this little toggle button over here. And so you just click on it and you'll get the scenes. So now, no matter what I do, I can move all around and I can come back and get right where I started. It's important to note though that it's also going to, the scene is also going to save any sort of coloring, any sort of graphical representation styles that you have, which can come in really handy, but it can also be unhandy if that's not what you want. Say I just want to focus on like one of these structures. I have two of these structures overlaid. Say maybe I just want to show one of them. And maybe I want to go even further and I want to go and I want to look at an individual location. Maybe what I want to do is I want to actually show the side chains of this amino acid. I can even do things like label it. Maybe I want to zoom in on it. I can do all sorts of things. And so um, this is what you could do is I can do all of this stuff all of these various options that you can do depending on what you want. However, now say I want to see where that amino acid was in the context of the protein from the same view that I saw before. Well, I can, if I go and I click on weird view, it got rid of that annotation of that residue that I just had. And look, it has both of the structures overlaid again, so I'm not getting kind of that view that I wanted before. How can I do this? How can I actually get back to this orientation, but have that annotation that I like? The way that you could do this is when you have an orientation that you like, say I like this weird view. No matter where I'm going all around, playing around, I come back and I get this weird view. If I go over here, I can go to get view. And now in here, it's going to show me this code that I can copy and paste no matter where I am to get this view. So what I like to do is I like to just save this in like a Word document or an, um, like a text document or a note, wherever you're doing any sort of scripting that you're doing for the PyMol. Um, so you can go ahead and copy that. And then what you can do is no matter what you do, so maybe I want to take this off. I don't remember exactly what I did before, but I want to show the side chain as sticks. I want to zoom in. I want to scroll around, move it all weird. But now I want to compare it in the context that it was before in terms of its view. I don't want to click on weird view because that would then take that, make that stick go away. It would add the other overlay on top of it. But what I can do is just come over here, copy and paste that, I mean, just paste that into here. And now I've got that same weird view. And now I could save the scene if I wanted to. Weird, I'll just name it, um, rename this as, weird stick view and voila. I can now go to weird view and weird stick view. Note that it kind of makes it look bigger or smaller or something. That's just because I have it on the sequence mode. And so when it has a second sequence overlaid, what's gonna happen is it makes this bigger and so it makes this smaller. Um, but now I can compare these directly in these two situations. This can be really helpful if say, I wanted to compare these two structures that are overlaid I can show them overlaid, but then I can also show them individually. And say I wanted to scroll around and around, um, then I wanted to, I could get back to that weird view. If I wanted to play around again and maybe make some other changes, maybe I want to um, show this as, I want to show the sticks here as well. And then what I can do is I can zoom in, I can do all sorts of funny stuff. And then if I wanted to get back though, to see where that was in the same context as before, I just have to paste in that code and voila, I'm there. That was a bad example because I have it hidden in the back so you can't really see it very well, but that's actually kind of helpful because it helps you put the context in to see, oh, what I'm looking at here was actually something that was in the back of that weird view.
So that's just a couple quick tips. Um, and so as always with PyMol, if you are confused about how to do something, Google is your friend. There's like PyMol wikis that can be really helpful. Um, you can also do help if you um, like type in help on here. And then if you know the command that you want help with, um, you can get that. Um, but basically, yeah. So this is the new version of PyMole. I'm just starting to use them. It's kind of, it's a lot prettier than the old version, but the same commands and everything work fine. Um, you just it, don't get as pretty of a layout in terms of the graphical user interface. Um, but a lot of this you can just do from the command line anyway, even more powerfully. So hope that this was helpful. And remember, just go over here, go to get view, select your, um, it'll put in the in here, this matrix that you just have to copy and paste, then no matter what you're doing, no matter what you're moving around, you can get that view, but have the same, basically, the same representation styles. So any of your sticks, any of your surfaces, any which things are displayed, what's your um, like opacity, all of this various stuff that will not be changed when you just copy and paste the view. If you do change the scene, all that will be changed. Um, so if you just want to change the orientation, this copying and pasting of the set of the view is going to be your friend. So just get the view um, and then set the view and voila. Oh yeah, so you can also just, if you wanted to um, do this in the command line, get view and it'll give you the view right now. I wanted to copy and paste this. Now say I wanted to get back to this orientation that I had in the very beginning this representation style, but I wanted to do it in the same view as my new view. Well, now I could do that. Another really important thing is saving the selections that you like. So say I went through and I wanted to go and select all of the different um, residues, all the different amino acids in a particular region on all of these chains. And I spend a lot of time doing that. Um, it makes your life a lot easier if you do it with the command line. You can just use like um, select resi and then you can do all sorts of selection algebra to, to select just what you want. So check out the PyMo wiki for more on that. But bottom line is, say you go and you make some sort of selection that you really, really like. Maybe I like the mobile loop of this molly dehydrogenase. So I want to save that selection and then I want to basically color it in a certain way. So maybe I'll color it all red. So this is really, really great. I can save my scene. So again, I could do it by save scene over here. Or I could just do it down here. I'll do scene red loop and I will just do store. And now I have this red loop scene stored and no matter what I do, I can come back and I can get that red red loop. And if I wanted it in another view, well now I could go and I could copy and paste that view that I had before into here and it would give me what I wanted, that same view I had before. So for example, if I wanted to get that uh, that second weird view we had, well, there we go. I have it with the loop, that color. Now, however, I go and I go do a bunch of different things and I take the coloring away and I do and I try all these other things, but now I want to get back to those mobile loop residues. It would be really easy because I haven't saved as a selection. If I hadn't saved it as a selection, even if I had changed the color and maybe I didn't even change the orientation, but maybe I just wanted to select a couple of these residues. I'm just going to randomly select a couple things and I'm going to say, okay, color these, color these red. And now I go and I do a bunch of things and I'm moving all around. And now I decide, oh, I didn't want to actually color those red. I wanted to color those green. Or maybe I go to a different view and then I want to see what those residues were. If I hadn't saved them as a selection, then I'd be in trouble. But because I have them saved as a selection, well, now it's really easy for me to do this. I have the selection I saved before, but later I might want to save a different selection. And then how would I know which selection was which? The easiest way to do this is to basically, all you have to do is go to set name, your old name. So in this case, it's Sully. And what I want to name it is Red Pick. 
Now you can see that it created this new object over here, which is that red pick selection. So no matter what I do, if I go to other views, if I'm going and I'm playing around and scrolling and doing all sorts of representations, I want to see where those weird residues I picked were before. Voila, they're right here. And then I can go and I can set them in the representation style that I liked. And I can come back to these over and over again. So save all the selections of sort of important groups of residues that you want to work with. I cannot stress how important this is, especially because in Pymol, if you you can easily kind of undo things that you didn't mean to do. Like if you wanted to color just certain residues a color, but then have the that have the main chain a different color, or you want to display sticks and you accidentally displayed sticks on all of everything, and then you want to hide the sticks on everything else, but not your things. If you have your things saved as a selection, it makes your life so much easier. Another tip is to basically save your files, save a session file every time you do it with the date. Um, that way, if you mess something up, you can always go back. And you can also use, um, if you go to log file, you can actually start log files and that'll save kind of the working scripts for the day. Um, you can go back and you can modify if you realize you did something wrong. There is an undo button, but it doesn't undo everything. So basically be careful and hope that this was helpful.